Good morning. It's a beautiful Lord's Day this morning. If you're sitting there wondering what I'm doing up here, then that makes two of us. So, um, uh, but I, uh, I I usually say I don't I don't really like people that uh, shirk their responsibility, and so I I gotta own up to my own uh, code, I guess. And uh, so sometimes these things are are uh, better for me than even for maybe some of you, but uh, um, I want to talk this morning about, uh, basically if I have a title, it would be called Searching for Truth. Um, it seems like a broad subject, so we will uh, take a look at it. Sometimes, you have to bear with me sometimes, I think over these things and I can I have a harder time articulating what's going through my brain and sometimes it doesn't come out the way um, it's in there. I had a person tell me once that the thing with you is you look at things five different ways at the same time. And I was like, huh, never heard that before, but maybe there's some truth to that. Um, so uh, I think first I'll read in Ephesians 5, 1 through 20. Be ye therefore, verse 1, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, and offering a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication, all uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not once be named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no warmonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom. Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Whose responsibility is not to be deceived? Anybody? Us. Let no man deceive you with vain words. That man is that man. That's his problem. It's your problem if you get deceived. Um, be not ye therefore partakers with him, with them. For you were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light, and the Lord walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. That's an interesting verse there. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and it's partly what we're going to be talking about today. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things are, that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Why would he tell us to awake um, from our sleep? It must be the human nature is to sleep, not in the real sense, but... Uh, be, uh, we become drowsy and we fall asleep, and that's what I get out of that. Uh, verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Another key verse in what we're looking at today, walking circumspect, circumspectly, um, not as fools, but as wise. Sometimes we look at uh, wisdom being wise as the people with the gray hair, and they are. Uh, they have lived a life and they should have um, become sanctified and be further down the road than we are. And I want to, you know, we want to look at that. But we all are called to be wise. It's not just the ones with white hair or age. Verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. There again is a key verse. Redeeming the time. It's action. It's not sitting back. Verse 17, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. It's another key verse. Not being unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Um, whose responsibility is that again? Ours. If the will of the Lord is always 
clearly evident, why would we have to understand it? So sometimes maybe we have to work on seeing what the will of the Lord is. Maybe it's not always absolutely in front of us. Um, Verse 18, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, What I'd like to focus on a little bit about today is not necessarily uh, absolutes from the Bible, but I'd I'd like to talk about finding truth um, that we live by our discerning right from wrong as we go through life. I'm, I'm not so naive to uh, not know that we can even argue about absolutes in the Bible. It seems that that's where a lot of different churches come from. But at the end of the day, I think most of us here agree on, you know, the Bible says, uh, or if we're putting away lying, you know, lying is an absolute. We don't lie. We don't sit around and try to figure out if that's wrong or right. So I'm not talking about that today. I'd like to focus on um, the gray areas, maybe. Or it's not necessarily always the gray areas. It's just um, applying to our own lives um, what's right and wrong. We just read over what it talks about. It says proving, um, seeing that we walk circumspectly, um, being... Verse 10, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. That's not a one-time thing. Uh, the way that reads, that's a, a lifelong thing. Um, I'm assuming once we're 70, we're still proving uh, what is acceptable unto the Lord. Um, verse 17, understanding what the will of the Lord is. There again, it's not a, a one-time thing. Uh, Another verse that comes to mind, 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There again, dividing the word of truth. Um, so, so this past week, I'm, I'm not looking to put anybody on a, on a uh, many, uh, uh, uncomfortable or anything, but I'm just curious. I mean, real quick, did anybody make a decision this week based on what they thought was right or wrong. Just, does anything pop to mind? You don't have to raise your hands, but, you know, did you? Um, you probably did without thinking about it. We probably all did a little bit. Um, and then going a little further, how did you come about that decision or why that decision? Um, how was that decision made? Um, some things to think about. Uh, I was trying to figure out how, how much I want to say, but I guess I'll dive into it a little bit so far as um, what I think about this subject a lot. But this past week, uh, I was thinking about it a lot because uh, there was a, believe it or not, a social media discussion I was following that was kind of interesting. And it got me to thinking. And so as an as a, kind of an application of what I'm looking at, I'll look at it briefly. I think the last I looked, there was 160 comments on it, so it was a hot button issue. And there was a, someone had posted something about music. Now, I like music. Uh, music has always, I can relate to, you know, mu- through music better than maybe some people, but it, I, I appreciate music. Um, and, but it is a hot button issue, and, and a lot of the, the settings we come come from has not really looked on music, in my terms, that well, or they haven't done that well with music. Um, and so, some of the things I see sometimes is is that we we react to it, maybe, and we don't we don't process it that well. What's right? What's wrong? What's good music? What's bad music? You know, all that. And there was a there was a point made on this post about, it was a pretty strong point. I didn't really agree with it. It was a quote, but it was to make a point. And uh, needless to say, there was, it really 
fired a lot of people up. But so I thought I found it interesting reading through the comments where people come from and what they said. Now, granted, the problem with social media posts is there's little sound bites from everyone, and so you got to read between the lines, and you don't really get the full picture. But it got my mind to thinking on that subject, and um, <laughs> um, it was interesting because there was some. There were some people on there that we probably weren't at the same place on what we on what music we listened to or what we thought was fine, but I actually agreed with their the way they arrived at their conclusion more than it did with the people over here that that we maybe are more um, well just you know maybe listen to the same kind of music, but I didn't really agree with the way they arrived to the I didn't agree with their premise of why it was right. If it, if it can make sense what I'm saying, and that's kind of what I'm looking at today is, is this is the, the, uh, the you could call it the uh, nitty gritty part of the Christian life, and it's usually where churches hang up on because they're churches or people, um, because there's that trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong, and that's a good thing, and we should, we should be concerned about what's right and what's wrong. Um, but one of the big things that stood out to me in, in this um, discussion was that a lot of the people, it was just a lot of reactionary stuff going on. They didn't like what they had over here when they're growing up, and that, you know, they're over here now because they didn't have this, but they're here. Um, where my call to action or something that, you know, if, if nothing else, if, if you don't hear anything else today, I hope that I plan to see that you think, maybe start thinking about, about it. Um, and I didn't, I'm not here to talk about music, but that was just one of the, I was thinking over that a lot this week, and that got me to thinking about what, about this subject, about looking for truth. How do we identify what's right and what's wrong for ourselves? And I could... And in this subject, I, I guess I'll be audacious enough to say that I think it's also, we're not always at the same place at the same time. That's, I'm not the same place as Sill or Matt. Or, and, and that's fine. I, I guess I'll say that's fine for, a lot, so for some things, so long as we are, um, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Um, Another verse I'm going to read here, Second Corinthians 13:5. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. There again, it says to prove our own selves. It doesn't say for the ministers to prove us. It doesn't say for our spouses to prove us. It doesn't say for our friends or mentors. That's a subject, that's fine, all those things are fine. But at the end of the day, um, we need to prove ourselves. Um, what is right, what is wrong. So how do we discern right from wrong? And here again, hear me, I'm not talking, today I'm not talking about the absolutes I think a lot of us agree on, I'm just talking about Basically, it comes down our code of ethics or what, you know. So, how do we discern right from wrong? Any, anybody sitting back there with something that's just popping in their head? I'll open it up for a little bit. But. Is it what we learn from parents, church, friends, or the setting we grew up in, the paradigm we live in? Um... Do, do we know why we do what we do? If someone asks you why you do that, can you have an answer for it? I'm not saying you instantly have to have an answer for everything, but my point is you need to process how you get to where you're at. If not, it's, you're not on a, on a, in a good position. I also want to put a disclaimer in here that what I'm talking about today, I'm not looking at putting anybody on a guilt trip. Um, I know there's people that struggle with 
assurance of salvation. And I, um, I know how that felt when I was younger. I will just say, if you put your sins under the blood and you accept Jesus as your savior and you have your faith in Jesus, you are saved. Anything other than that is from the devil. Fear, confusion is from the devil. So I'm not coming up here trying to create a lot of questions. What I am talking to is us as Christians that are on the journey, that are being sanctified daily, hopefully. And you know, how are we going about that journey? There's a whiteboard up here. I'm gonna, thinking about paradigms, um, this is something big, I think, that we, that we need to think about, is the paradigms we live in. Um, the more I read, the more I travel, the more I look, observe people, the more I come to the conclusion that there's not a huge amount of difference between us sitting here, between um, a Guatemalan community in Guatemala and some tribe in Kasakhstan up in the mountains. Like, there's not huge amounts of differences. There's differences in application. There's differences in culture. Um, there's differences in religions, as we all know. But most people, as uh, us as humans, do the same thing. We have the same tendencies. We have, we're all sinful. We all know that we're all fallen without Jesus. But what I'm talking about is, you know, we kind of all operate the same. We think we're, a lot of us here have come from, uh, um, and are in, you could say, but have come from more conservative settings where we grew up. And, um, you know, it's not good or bad. That's just, that's who we are. That's the paradigm we live in. But we think, I think sometimes we think we're special or, you know, that we're so different from everyone else. Well, we're not. But where we come from does shape how we view things and how we make decisions. And so thinking about that, I'm, gonna, I'm not an artist at, by any stretch, but I'd like to see if I can draw something. Sometimes a picture does more than words. So... Maybe that's, that's what we see, that's what's in front of us. That's, um, then I'd like to maybe think about what God sees. And here again, you could draw this different ways, but for lack of time, I'll do this. God's creation always amazes me. Um, if you all could see that. Um, and, and sometimes I think it, it'd do well for us to stand back and to see things, try to see. We're called to be more like God, more like Christ, right? And so in doing that, we should maybe try to see things a little bit more the way he sees them. And... Uh, most times, us as, as humans see this. That's all we see is whatever's right in front of us. We don't really think outside the box a whole lot, whereas God is a very poor depiction, but it, I want us to maybe think about how he looks at things. You know, We are, I'm not a huge scholar on, on, on uh, the atmosphere and all that, but from what I know is we're one planet in a whole a realm of creation. And so we go through life and we, we get, you know, we get to thinking that we're bigger than we really are and we think that we're 
really rocking it down here. And, you know, we close a million dollar deal, we buy the new truck and marry the pretty lady and start a marriage. And, you know, that's, it's all good things. <clears throat> um, but we come zoned in on, on that and it's not, um, sometimes I think uh, for myself, it's better to try to see things a little bit more as God sees them as we are, um, ultimately we're a small creation of his. We're all created, I mean, we're a valued part of his creation, but um, I think seeing things in that way should, ins should create worship in us, where we actually want to worship um, our Lord and creator. But moving on, um, so, it's not so it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, we, we can't change the paradigm we live in necessarily, but we can change how we view things. Um, you know, there's all, all kinds of situations. We grow up, you know, we, we, we view life through the parents we've had, through the settings we are, the things that happened to us, the um, siblings we had or didn't have, or what happened to us. All those things shape how we view things. And, um, and so it is good to try to maybe set yourself apart from those things and look at things, um, try to look at things through a different lens, process, why you think, why you think, you know, why are you thinking this way? Um, one of the things that we do a lot, I do it a lot, and I think it's just human nature, is react, we react, we're reactionary people. And it's not always necessarily where, when someone reacts that they're, you know, sinning, it's just, it's, it's a zero-sum game. You're over here, you react, and now you're over here. It doesn't, it doesn't nothing really changes. And, and so ultimately, most times, reactionary things are, aren't that good, and they don't really turn out that well in the long run. They're not a long-term. Living a reactionary life isn't a sustainable thing for a Christian. Um, Another thing I think that uh, I want to point on is is, is ch uh, churches a lot of times actually um, work against this. Um, it, it's kind of a threat if people uh, try to process things and try to think through or try to know why they do what they do and they think through things themselves. Um, most people call it individualism and, and that's usually a bad word in church and so people push against that. Um, I'm not here talking about being individualistic but we just read a whole bunch of verses that say we ourselves are responsible for ourselves. And so the uh, the church is a beautiful thing, and I actually I'm here to say that the church is made stronger by individuals that are rooted and grounded in truth and able to articulate why they do what they do. And and if the church is not threatened by that, that's the church is made stronger by that. A church is only as strong as the blocks that build the church, as the members of the church, as the as the uh, individuals in the church. Um, and, and I'll just also say that living the Christian life in default mode is not sustainable or growth oriented. Um, basically all, all we're talking about this morning is, is being intentional about where you're going, what you're doing. Um, can you grow without being, can you grow in default mode? I don't think you can. I mean, we all have times we kind of level off and, you know, we're, um, work through things, but um, too many times I, people and I myself act like stowaways. We jump on ship. 
we try to get we want to get to a certain destination, but we don't want to, um, you know, be an active participant. Basically, we're just trying to get somewhere. Um, I don't really think that's what the Christian life entails. Um, and I will say, I think that it is a something that we uh, that affects us coming from the settings we do. Um, the, by, by churches setting uh, perimeters and creating rights and wrongs not personable to the individuals. It's not necessarily that I just said the church is, what the church did was wrong. It was basically the church is doing for the individuals what the individuals need to do for themselves. And that creates a lot of confusion sometimes. If it's not, I've heard, I've, I've heard people say that, well, we got to do that because, you know, where do people end up if, if they don't have that, that line to go with? I'm here to say if that line is the only thing keeping you from going there, you've already, you already missed the boat. Um, if it is not personal to you, living in truth, then um, it's not going to, doing what someone else tells you to do isn't going to help you at all. It might make you look good for a while. It might, you know, keep you out of the crosshairs. The other thing I would like to say in this is that I, I do want to um, there, any subject like this, you can take it too far, you can um, construe things. Um, and I would like to say that while we are responsible for ourselves, that um, I do want to put a note in that, um, and for lack of time, I'm not going to talk about it a whole lot, but that other people should have a, a play in our lives churches should have a play in our lives. Um, it's just that at the end of the day, we're going to give an account for ourselves. Um, in closing, um, I would like to say that it's not so important that you always get it right. I know that sounds bad, but, but it, it is important that you are intentional about, intentional about rightly dividing the word of truth. So sometimes I think maybe us as perfectionists are so worried about not getting it right that we just sit back and chill. Well, that's not correct. You need to be intentional. You need to be concerned about rightly dividing the word of truth. And in doing that, it doesn't mean you're going over and hitting everybody over the head with what you're looking at, but it is that you're applying it to your own life and living it out. With God's help, the Word, the Holy Spirit, and the people around you that are mentoring you. This is a process of sanctification and growing in Christ. Um, and that in itself only means that there is not an arrival point till the good Lord returns and we live in eternity. So. We like to, we like to arrive, you know, as, as humans, we like to achieve, which is good. And there is high points and low points in Christian life, but at the end of the day, we should constantly be dividing the word of truth, constantly growing till the good Lord calls us home. In closing, I'd like to read um, 2 Timothy 2.19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's a beautiful promise, that the Lord knoweth them that are his, and the foundation of God standeth sure. So with that, I will close. Thank you.